Ella, si era morena, si el hito lindo viene en mano. Un par de ojitos negros, si el hito lindo de contrabando. Si era morena, si el hito lindo viene bajando. Un par de ojitos negros, si el hito lindo de contrabando. Task Force alum, board member, and co-chair for this year's Make and Change Happen Breakfast. Along with me is fellow board member, Stephanie Lynn. Sorry guys, so just give us one second. We are muted. <laughs> That's Zoom for you guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, all good. Welcome to 2020, everybody. That'll hopefully be the only time that I do that today. <laughs> um, I said something really amazing and eloquent and you all missed it, I'm sorry. Uh, so you're going to have to get stuck with what I'm going to say now. Anyway, thank you, Oscar. Um, I am so thrilled to be with everybody this morning and so happy to see so many names that I recognize in the chat. It's so fun to say hi to all of you. Um, just a reminder that if you are using the chat, please select all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see your messages. Um, as Oscar said, my name is Stephanie Lynn. I'm an associate here at Wilmer Hale. I don't know how to use the mute button. Um, Wilmer Hale is how I first got introduced to High Square Task Force almost seven years ago. Um, and I also happen to live in Jamaica Plain, just right around the corner from Hyde Square. So I love being able to see how this organization and the youth in this organization impact my own neighborhood as well as uh, young people across the city. Oscar and I really wish we could be with you all in person, but we are so happy that you've been able to virtually join us today in supporting Hyde Square Task Force. That's right. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Make and change happen is the theme for this year's breakfast, and that seems more important today than ever before. 
the only way that we can tackle a pandemic and a continued call for racial justice is by making change happen. And we are here today to do the work. For almost three decades, Hyde Square Task Force has been working to work, uh, has been working to make change happen. Our honorees have also done the same day in and day out. We want to say a big thank you to everyone who signed on this morning to support our youth, our staff, and our neighborhood, Boston's Latin Quarter. We would like to thank all of our sponsors and give a special thank you to this year's leading and advocate sponsors. Our Bella Insurance Foundation, Bay Boston Managers, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, Boston Children's Hospital, Capuano Care, JP Morgan Chase and Company, Liberty Mutual Insurance, Moore Advertising, State Street Corporation, Sun Life, and United Way of Massachusetts Bay and Merrimack Valley. Please check our website to learn more about the rest of our sponsors. We couldn't do this without all of you. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm sure you all can't wait to hear from our youth, but before that, we would like to thank our fellow breakfast committee members, Jane Matlaw, Annie Sanchez, Judy Haber, and Anne-Marie Lewis Kerwin. Thank you for all that you've done to make this morning happen. If any of you have joined us for breakfast in, your, in years past, you know that the High Score Task Force youth are talented, creative, and powerful. This hasn't changed one bit, despite the fact that since March, youth have been participating in our Hovenes and Oxion program virtually. So yes, this means they have been doing Afro-Latin dance, music, theater, mentoring, and civic engagement all online. Check out this video to learn from them what it's been like. Hi, my name is Farida. I am an uprising senior. I am a part of the ACT program at Hyde Square Task Force, also known as HSTF. Going on, everybody. My name is Carolina. I'm 14 years old. I am a rising freshman at Boston Latin School, and I am part of the FEMO program at Hyde Square Task Force. Hola, mi nombre es Cedras. Yo soy un joven de Hyde Square. Right now, we are going through a global racial pandemic. Um, and due to coronavirus, we did have to move our summer program and make it virtual. Corona has affected a lot of people, young people, old people, especially a lot of businesses. We talked about adjusting to society and how coronavirus just came and said, boop, I'm here, I'm taking everything in my way, I don't care, that's it. But High Square Task Force didn't let that get to them. Honestly, they made a platform for us on Zoom to be able to still, you know, do our programs. Um, I'm with my crew right now and I'm just gonna let them say hi real quick. Hold on. Say hi, guys. Hi. Estamos hablando cómo fue el fin de semana y qué estaremos viendo durante el día. Después que terminamos como un un mini fuego, algo así. Y después comenzamos con Lesiones de grupo. This week, we're focusing on creativity. Um, for example, how you can use creativity to, you know, deal with any problems that life throws at you. Of course, we focus on dances and expressing yourself through movement. Um, we're really inclusive with every type of dance that we do, but we do focus a lot on Latin dances because um, we are located in Boston's Latin Quarter um, in Jamaica Plain. Y así que mi experiencia en High Square ha sido de lo más increíble. En este verano he aprendido un poco, un poco a aprender la guitarra. También una de las experiencias increíbles con High Square es que escribí mi primer canción. Escribí mi primer canción. 
mi segunda canción. Tengo dos canciones escritas por mí misma, así que ha sido increíble para mí, una experiencia única con, con todos los maestros. I started at Head Square Task Force the summer of 2019, and it was a very warm welcome. Find somebody up on your screen and bow into them. Figured out how to still play games with us and, you know, do our daily routines we used to do in real life virtually, and how to keep people encouraged and enthusiastic about our situation. Okay, let's go on the dance, dance floor found ways to teach us about things that were important, like college, our surroundings, the environment that we're in, what's going on in the world right now, how we can prevent, how we can help. Hashtag say her name was made by black women for black women who died from police brutality or white vigilante attacks and didn't get media coverage or justice for the heinous crimes committed against them. No. Siento... No sé cómo expresarlo, me siento en familia. Me siento bien, me siento bien tratado con los jóvenes, son muy amables. Hay un ambiente genial. Me encanta. And they've even figured out how to still provide senior mentoring for their senior youth. It's really accepting. It's a really tight community. It's almost like a family, honestly. Our task force is overall a really friendly organization. It's a place where young people like myself can learn how to audition for a play, how to sing for a crowd, how to dance for the whole world, to see and not have the feeling that you're embarrassed or that you're not good enough or that, you know, no one's going to take you serious. The, this place gives you opportunities. Hemos disfrutado mucho. Espero les guste. Ha sido increíble. Y así que hasta, no sé hasta cuándo, pero hasta, espero hasta pronto. Así que adiós. Buenos dias, good morning. My name is Celina Miranda, and I am honored to serve as Hyde Square Task Force's Executive Director. As you just saw, while dramatically different, our work has not stopped. I am inspired by what our young people have been able to create, even from a distance. Like Stephanie and Oscar, I am also grateful to all of you for joining us this morning and to our generous sponsors for stepping up on behalf of our young people. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge Senator Sonia Cheng Diaz, BPS Superintendent Brenda Castilias, BPS Executive Director of the Arts Anthony Beatrice, City Councilor Anissa Estabi George, City Councilor and Andrea Campbell, City Councilor Julia Mejia, City Councilor Michelle Wu, and Congress Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, who have all joined us this morning. I also want to thank all of our partners, there are too many of you to mention, uh, for joining us and giving us your support. This has certainly been an unprecedented year for all of us. But, but for our youth and their families, the past eight months have been particularly difficult. The pandemic has disproportionately affected black and brown communities which directly impacts the families and young people we work with. In addition to illness and the loss of loved ones, many of our youth and their families have experienced financial hardship due to the loss of jobs. And our youth, like the rest of our country, have been grappling with another pandemic, racism and anti-blackness in our country. For many of us, including our youth, this has shaken us to our core, reminding us that the work for racial equity is far from done. And last month, we also suffered a huge loss. One of our Jovenes en Acción youth, one of our alums who was fatally shot, Olivar Soto, was a vibrant 20-year-old with so much promise ahead of him. We join his family and friends in mourning this incredible loss. 
and are reminded how deeply violence continues to impact our community. While the past few months have been extremely challenging, our youth have given us so much hope. Despite the abrupt, remote, the, the abrupt move to remote learning, this past spring, 52 college students earned a degree, a record no, number for us. Our college coaches are staying close to our students to ensure they stay on track with their studies. Our Jovenes and Acción youth have continued to show up and demonstrate strength and resiliency. Once again, 100% of our high school seniors graduated and 92% went on to college. As you will see throughout the program, our youth have unleashed their creativity in new ways, and they have stepped into their power as leaders. For instance, Alejandra, a 12th grader in our Jovenes en Acción program, served on a statewide panel this summer to give voice to the challenges Latinx students are facing in light of the pandemic. Most recently, she appeared on TV, speaking to the difficulty of staying academically motivated in this remote world. While Alejandra, like many other students, are being challenged in new ways, she has to continue to stay connected with us. In theater, Alejandra has devised poignant pieces. She has met with her mentor regularly to make sure she stays on track and plans for next year. And she has used her voice to advocate for students like her. Our creative development and community engagement work has also adjusted to the times. We have partnered with Afro-Latin artists across Boston to ensure children and families stay connected virtually through the arts. These events have been paired with special activity kits, which we have distributed throughout the neighborhood. Adjusting to this new reality has not been easy. I have been utterly impressed with our staff, board, volunteers, families, and youth. Our staff demonstrated tremendous perseverance and creativity as they quickly learned new platforms so they could deliver programming in the same dynamic way they do in person. Together, we have pulled our collective strength and can-do attitude to meet the needs of our youth and their families. Thanks to generous supporters, we have been able to distribute gift cards for food and basic necessities as well as cash assistance for rent and utilities. We joined forces with the Greater Boston Latino Network to address the disproportionate cases of COVID in our community, distributing over 7,000 masks along with basic safety information. All of this work would not be possible without you. You have added to our resiliency by showing up and supporting us in numerous ways. You have fueled us to continue doing our work when our youth, college students, families, and community need us most. Heights Square Task Force will continue meeting the pressing needs of those we work with. And perhaps more so than ever, we will amplify their voices and strength. These times call for nothing less. Our work must continue, and with supporters by our side, we will do just that. This brings me to our first honoree of the morning. We are pleased to honor Wilmer Hale for leveraging its resources and expertise in multiple ways to make a difference in the lives of so many. And in recent mon months, we have been impressed with Wilmer Hale and how they've been bold in its actions and their actions to move racial equity forward. Our relationship with Wilmer Hale dates back to 2011. It goes without saying that we are grateful for their financial support. But what sets Wilmer Hale's leadership apart is the depth to which they commit the firm's resources to supporting the causes they believe in. Following George Floyd's killing in May, the firm launched a racial justice reform initiative that pairs lawyers with nonprofits doing anti-racism work. Since then, the firm has logged over 6,000 pro bono hours to move this work forward. It goes without saying that Wilmer Hale is a great community partner. In addition to pro bono services, they open their doors to Heights Square Task Force youth and others on a consistent basis. 
for several years, as many of you may know. They have generously donated their beautiful space for our annual breakfast, which has been a critical part of our event's growing success. Wilmer Hale also welcomes you through the firm by hosting college and career-focused workshops, as well as the Summer Leadership Institute every year. Through these opportunities, Wilmer Hale leverages the time and expertise of their fantastic team of attorneys and other employees to create meaningful learning opportunities for Boston's young people. Over the year, hundreds of High Square Task Force youth have benefited, benefited from these experiences. It is our great pleasure to recognize Wilmer Hale for its social citizenship, its philanthropic commitment to our city, and many other communities throughout the country. Please join me in congratulating Wilmer Hale. Now, let's hear from them. Thank you, Selena. My name is Felicia Ellsworth, and I'm very happy to be here with you this morning celebrating Hyde Square Task Force, their youth, and the collective community work. Along with Senior Associate Stephanie Lynn, who's on the Board of Directors and is co-chair of the Breakfast Committee this year, and our entire Office of Lawyers and Staff, Wilmer Hale is honored to receive the Corporate Leader Award and counts itself so fortunate to play just a small role in supporting Hyde Square Task Force's important mission. Wilmer Hale and Hyde Square Task Force have been partners for nearly 10 years now. We're really proud of this partnership and our support of the youth, and of Hyde Square Task Force's important mission, which we support through volunteer engagement and in-kind service, including this wonderful annual breakfast, which we usually host in person at our offices in Boston. I'm really sorry not to be serving everyone coffee and eggs and Danish this morning. Every spring, the firm hosts youth workshops that focus on resume building, honing interview skills, and other career readiness skills. Since 2011, we've hosted hundreds of youth for these professional workshops and hired more than 20 Hyde Square Task Force youth through our Summer Leadership Institute. This past summer, we of course, unfortunately, were not able to host interns due to COVID-19, but we remember very fondly our last two Hyde Square Task Force interns, Anyara and Mayuris, as they worked in firm departments, attended morning academic classes, participated in client meetings, and went on field trips to courthouses and colleges. We've seen many Hyde Square Task Force youth take positive risks to expand their professional knowledge, explore future careers, deepen their understanding of college choices ahead, and map out their professional goals. Hyde Square Task Force has played a significant role in preparing them for these professional opportunities. We really look forward to having youth in our halls again soon. Wilmer Hale has always been deeply impressed by Hyde Square Task Force's support of their youth in this remarkable year. From the virtual youth programs to the neighborhood outreach, COVID-19 has not stopped the staff of Hyde Square Task Force from serving the community. And in this time of racial justice, their mission to amplify the power of youth and Afro-Latin culture and build a vibrant Latin quarter and a just, equitable Boston is more important than ever. Despite the obstacles and challenges this year, music, dance, art, and connection have continued. We know that youth need partners who believe in them as they strive to graduate high school, begin their college education, shape their voice, and become change makers. We're proud to continue our partnership with the Hyde Square Task Force and look forward to a better year ahead. And now I'm pleased to turn it over to Oscar. Thank you. All right, thank you uh, and congratulations to Wilmer Hale. And I now have the pleasure of introducing this year's Emerging Leader Award. Each year, this award is given to a high Square Task Force alum who exemplifies our mission by being a leader and inspiring their community. This year, the clear choice was Chris Maldi Vasquez Casado. I had the privilege of meeting Chris Maldi as uh, soon as I joined High Square Task Force back in 2007. After being part of High Square Task Force as a youth, Chris Maldi went off to college and then came back as a staff member. She was actually my, my youth community organizer coordinator back in high school. She always encouraged my peers and I to think critically about what we wanted our communities to look 
and feel like. And when we identified anything that we wanted to improve, she helped us to uh, figure out how to make change happen. Chris Maldi always set an awesome example of leadership and a big part of that has always been to create opportunities for others to lead along with her. She has continued to be a mentor to me and other alums throughout the years, and I know exactly how much of an impact she has made on all of us. It is my great honor to virtually announce Chris Maldi Vasquez Casado as the 2020 High Square Task Force Emerging Leader Award recipient. Congratulations, Chris. Now, let's hear from her. Good morning to all. Thank you, Oscar, and thank you, High Square Task Force. I am honored to receive this award. Today, I'd like to share a story, a quintessential Boston tale of a young Latinx woman who dared to dream, who pushed boundaries for herself and her community. It was 1999. I was 14 years old, walking down Center Street after school when a woman stopped me asking if I wanted a slice of pizza. It was really an invitation to a meeting, but I walked in for the pizza. It was my first encounter with the High Square Task Force and the pivotal moment in my life. The woman shared a statistic that shook me to my core. Something like JP had three times more young people than West Roxbury, yet West Roxbury had 10 times more resources. That was the birth of my political consciousness. I joined the High Square Task Force as a youth organizer afterwards. I began to understand the dark ravages of cyclical poverty and failing school systems. A burning fire swelled inside of me. I noticed how different my cousins in Newton lived from my cousins in Franklin Field, Dorchester. I would later realize firsthand how zip codes correlate with life outcomes. I have vivid memories of pulling my own chair up to tables I was not invited to. Tables where adults were making decisions about a major development project in my neighborhood. Hundreds of us youth showed up to those meetings and completely changed the direction of the project. I learned an important lesson about not waiting to be invited. Even more important, I realized that young people can move mountains. As I continued to learn my advocacy skills, I brought them to the High Square Task Force internally with the idea of starting a dance group. I was inspired because my friends and I would meet in our living rooms and choreograph dances with dreams of performing at a local street fair like the JP World's Fair. Brenda, a High Square Task Force staff, understood the vision and bought in. Rimo went on to perform at the World Salsa Congress in Los Angeles, in Paris, and eventually in front of the First Lady. Yes, our youth danced salsa at the White House. I went off to college and in 2007 came back as a staff member of the High Square Task Force. There I saw an opportunity to transform the summer event series from a staff run endeavor and instead let the youth take the lead. With a blank slate, and the freedom to dream big. The youth produced fashion shows, concerts, and much more. Participation grew tenfold to over a thousand attendees. Center Street became the mecca of artistic expression for young people across the city. Again, demonstrating the creative and powerful energy young people bring. I witnessed similar bold energy when young people challenged and aim to address structural inequities in community policing practices. This is in 2009, long before police misconduct was a national headline. Similarly, our youth reported being sexually harassed at school. This led to a campaign for comprehensive sex ed in the Boston Public Schools. After being rejected by many elected officials, one city councilor agreed to support the youth Ayanna Presley became not just a supporter, but a champion. I learned the importance of having representation in elected positions. It's not identity politics. It's having people with lived experience who are authentically connected. 
I stand before you feeling like everything has come full circle. As a woman of color in the corporate sector, I lead with compassion. I center equity in all that I do. In my role at Tufts Health Plan, I practice a trust-based approach to working with and investing in communities. So many of us High Score Task Force alum continue to carry our lessons learned in nonprofits, in corporate America, in schools, in small businesses. We also activate our collective power for political candidates that we believe in. Dozens of us were energized by Julia Mejia's campaign, helping elect Boston's first Afro-Latina city councilor. As I wrap up, I'd love to give a few thank you shout outs. Thank you to Caprice Taylor for bribing me with pizza and motivating my desire to create a more equitable world. Ken Tanvik for being a mentor and a friend, always ready to fight for injustice. Brenda Rodriguez for daring to dream and to dance. Rimo became more than a dance group. It became a movement. My fellow award recipient, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, for inspiring me and providing a blueprint for what shared power looks like. I want to conclude by thanking the High Score Task Force for the unconditional support and for helping me realize that young people can move mountains. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Maldi. And um, I am forever grateful um, for you, for your leadership, for your activism, um, because you did start high, um, high School Task Force program, Primo en Acción. And I was one of the lucky participants that went to Paris to perform. And that trip for me was life-changing. So thank you and congratulations again on being this year's emerging leader. Very well deserved. Um, Many of you may recognize me. I'm usually on stage dropping mics and causing trouble. This year, I'm in the comfort of my own living room. Uh, but my name is Annie Sanchez. I am the processing team lead at Boston Private Bank. I'm also the treasurer of High Squid Task Force Board of Directors. And I have been a part of High Squid Task Force since I was 12 years old. Now, a lady never tells her age, but I can tell you that that is, I have dedicated and supported High Squid Task Force for more than half my life. And, and I do so because what they do is, it, was, it made an impact in my life and it is an important work that they're doing and I will continue to support it for as long as I can. And that is why it is with a sincere heart that I ask during this time of giving that you consider supporting High School Task Force. Uh, you can make a donation this morning by texting, making change happen to 44321, and that information can also be located in the chat. Your contributions this morning will be matched up to $10,000, thanks to the generosity of Linda and Sherman Saperstein. During the pandemic, High School Task Force has stepped up to support youth and their families in new and difficult way, in different ways. Youth have also stepped up with their leadership as they always do. This work has not been easy, but it has been very powerful. High School Task Force has been able to adapt to and continue to support our youth and their families thanks to you, our fantastic group of supporters. A donation this morning is an investment in our vision of a city where youth reach their full potential and are reflected in the city of Boston's culture and leadership. Thank you all for your generosity. I know this has been a very difficult time and a very difficult year for many, and your choice to support the High School Task Force during this time would not be taken for granted. I am now going to turn it over to Jelly, who is going to introduce a video um, of a theater piece that she and fellow youth Jedediah and Saraya created this summer as part of their culminating virtual performance. Thank you. And I'm in 12th grade and I've been at high square for one and a half years. And this summer we did a play called The Frozen Nightmare where this like family 
they get in an argument with their teenage daughter and then she yells like oh i never want to see you guys again and then it actually does happen she gets a memory because of ice and then she's like oh wait no i don't actually want this it turns out it was just a nightmare so they get reunited and have a happy ending at the end um and it was cool to see like the team and stuff develop because it was awkward at first and it was like quiet because none of us really knew what to say yeah so eventually like when we do our ideas we would be writing and stuff like we all wrote our own lines so that it feels more natural for us to say none of us were like uncomfortable with saying lines that like would be hard to act out and like and um yeah it was fun all in all you good i'm home i was broke you look so tired <laughs> yes it was the same as usual Thank you. please. Yeah. Why were you hanging out with those boys again? Out late again? After we told you we shouldn't, you shouldn't be there. Come on, Anna. You could have gotten yourself in trouble or you could have gotten yourself hurt. It really wasn't that serious. We were just having some fun and nothing bad even happened. But that still doesn't give you the right to disobey us, Anna. You could put yourself and this family at risk. Okay, I understand that, but like I told you, it really isn't that serious. Listen to your father, Anna. Remember having seen Frank Camila? Yes, I know. And you already know the risk of being undocumented in this country. We don't have to tell you that. Just as much at risk as we are. I'm sorry if we didn't tell you soon enough, but no more going out. You're grounded. Wait, but Papi, that's not fair. Don't talk back. And no more phone either. What, bro, okay, so let me get this straight. First, you guys lied to me, and now I can't even live my own life. I hate both of y'all. <laughs> Don't talk like that. Go to your room. You know, I hope you guys do get taken away so that maybe I can live my own life. Hi, welcome back to your trusted news channel. Over the last few days, we have gotten multiple reports of ice arrest around the area. We have come to you guys to let you know, and we also want to let you know of the new policy that ICE has, which allows all agents to search anyone that looks like they're not American. We want you guys to be safe, and that is it for today's segment. With all that noise, Hector, get up now. What happened? I don't know, but check out that banging noise. Honey, it's the police. What are they here for? We had done nothing wrong. Oh, I just mean, oh my God, they're going to take us. Oh my God. Wait, Bobby, what's happening? Why are the police here? I know, nothing. Go back to your room right now and hide. No, 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 what's happening? I know, go back to your room. Take the girl! Oh, no. no, don't touch me. I don't know you. Leave my parents alone. They didn't do anything. I'm scared. Why are we here? It's fine, sweetie. Just stay close. Hector, they're separating the families. Then over there. Take the woman and the man. Please, for Papa Sunder, we didn't do anything. We have to stay with our daughter. Please don't take us away from you. We have orders to follow. You aliens shouldn't even be in this country. You're coming with us. Stop, don't touch them. Leave my parents alone. I'm not leaving my daughter. No, no. <laughs> Please, she's our child. Take them now. And also leave the child. What? Hey, you, come with us. Where are my parents? What did you do with them? What do we do with her, boss? Put her in one of them boxes. Where am I? Why is it so dark in here? It's... Cargo ready for departure. Wait, what? What? Help! Help! We're gonna be late. Wake up. We're gonna be late for school. Wake up, Anna. Anna, wake up. Mommy, Papi. Oh, you guys are you guys okay? <sighs> are you okay, honey? Yeah. Are you sick? Let me put your hand. No, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just that I'm really glad you guys are here with me. We're happy that you're here too. Um, is this about what we talked about yesterday? No, 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 I'm fine. I understand. I understand. It's just, I just love you both a lot. You love you too, Miha. I love you too. Hello, everyone. Um, you know, I have seen this piece at least five times, and I'm still so amazed by the wonderful work our young people have been able to create over Zoom. It is now my great honor to introduce this year's Inspiring Leader Award recipient. I could name so many reasons why this year we are thrilled to recognize Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. 
Since she made history as the first black woman elected to the Boston City Council, and even before that, she has made a tremendous positive impact on the lives of Bostonians, and in particular, on the primarily Latinx and black youth that Hyde Square Task Force works with. And as Crismali shared, she was the first city councilor to support our youth many years ago when they campaigned in support of comprehensive sex education in Boston public schools. Ensuring this effort was successfully implemented. Since becoming a US representative, notably the first black woman elected to represent the Massachusetts 7th District in Congress. She has been a champion of the people she represents, prioritizing and centering the voices for those, of those in our communities who have been and continue to be the most marginalized. She has led the change on efforts that would make our criminal justice system more fair, protect the rights of LGBTQ plus people, confront climate change, make our immigration system more humane, and build a more equitable economy. What's more, she unapologetically speaks against the many unjust and immoral things that have been said and done all too often in Washington, D.C. in recent years. The issues that Congresswoman Ayanna Presley fights for make a difference to our youth and in our community. The fact that she draws on her lived experience is an incredible strength. And we see firsthand how inspirational this is in allowing our youth to see themselves represented in politics. Many of our youth have expressed how much they look up to her. And now I am pleased to introduce to you the 2020 Inspiring Leader Award recipient, Congresswoman Ayanna Press. Wow. Leslie, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm, I, this is, I'm so emotional this morning. Um, I had to go off camera when Chris Maldi was speaking because this is such a full circle moment. And um, I'm in Washington fighting this fight and I miss you all so very much. I miss being in community with you. Um, and so I appreciate this opportunity uh, to be with you in virtual community. I'm so humbled and honored by this award. And, and, I, and I accept it um, not for what we have done already, but for what we will do together. And we do have much work to do together. Um, but as the saying goes, uh, many hands make for light work. And over and over again, the Hyde Square Task Force has extended a hand in the work of social justice, in the work of racial justice, in the work of community upliftment. I do wanna just celebrate uh, my fellow honorees and, and thank uh, Felicia and Chris Malti, you're both a source of strength and inspiration. Um, congratulations to you. I do also want to give a shout out to my sister in service, Counselor uh, Mejia, who makes us so proud each and every day. Um, you know, and it's one thing to have representation, but representation without righteousness means nothing. And so in Counselor Mejia, we certainly have uh, both of those things. And I could argue that we have that uh, with Felicia and Chris Maldi as well. Uh, anytime that we are in spaces where we are in the minority uh, in every way, um, yes, representation is important because we bring uh, the totality of our lived experiences to that table. But if we don't remain rooted and connected to community, if we're not bringing that righteousness, then it is all in vain. So uh, again, good morning and thank you. Uh, I wanted to, Chris Molly started with a story, and I want to start with a story too, because it's actually uh, young people like this young woman, the story I'm going to tell, and, and then the story of a mother that I'm going to tell that I want to dedicate this award to. Several years ago, um, I met a mother, Rocio, who uh, is a domestic worker, and her employer um, had made her uh, do her job naked. Um, because he was sure that she would steal from him. And Rocio got up every day and went and endured the indignity of that, the dehumanization of that, because she felt that there was no one, no other recourse for her, no one that saw her, no one that would speak for her, no one that could defend her. Now, why did she do that? What compelled her? love for her two children for whom she had to provide. The other story that I wanna share with you is that of a young girl in our district 
uh, the Massachusetts seventh, 11 years old, uh, growing up in a single parent household like the one that I was raised in. Her mother was not feeling well and uh, said, I'm gonna go get checked out, I'll be right back. Her mother did not return uh, because shortly thereafter she was diagnosed with coronavirus and was on a ventilator fighting for her life. For two weeks, that 11 year old cared for her nine month old little brother without groceries, without diapers, and no one knew that she was there alone. And because she's undocumented, she did not dare ask for help for fear that she would be met with punishment instead of compassion. Fortunately, um, because community was paying attention, because a neighbor was paying attention and noticed that no adult was going in and out of that home, uh, they then tapped in a community-based organization who went to that home and provided groceries and diapers to that little girl and got her the support that she needed. But the stories of that 11-year-old little girl and the story of Rocio, neither of these are anomalies. We know that there are many families who live with this kind of fear, who feel alone. And I just want to say thank you to Hyde Square Task Force because when government has failed, when policies have failed, when people have felt invisible and marginalized in every way, Hyde Square Task Force, you have seen them and you have extended a hand. And so in the midst of unprecedented hurt as a nation, what I have seen through organizations like Hyde Square Task Force and through the honorees that we celebrate today is unprecedented community in the face of that unprecedented pain and unprecedented love. I think when you are a truth teller, when you are a table shaker, when you are an activist, when you are an agitator, that people can misunderstand what that comes from. Yes, we do have rage, but it's righteous rage. And it's born out of a radical, radical love. And I will never make any apologies for that because I know that another world is possible. One that replaces our oppression with liberation. One that replaces our trauma with healing. One that replaces inequity with justice. And we can all build that world together. So in the midst of unprecedented pain, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you all for giving me unprecedented hope to keep doing this work. And finally, to our young people, whoo, y'all are bad. Let me tell you something. There can be no revolution without the arts and there can be no revolution without our young people. They have been the foot soldiers for and ushered in every transformative social movement in this country. So you keep it up. You keep challenging us. You keep truth telling. You keep table shaking and just know that I'll always be your big sister in solidarity and your accomplice in good trouble. Thank you, everyone. Oh, wow. What a hard act to follow. I want to thank you so much, Congresswoman Presley, for the righteous love you have for our community, for your leadership, for your relentless fight. We join you uh, and we're there for you. Before we wrap up, we'd like to share at least uh, one other example of the wonderful work our young people have been able to create virtually. Earlier, Crismaldi mentioned our Jóvenes en Acción program's dance team, Ritmo en Acción, which she helped create. The dance team still learns salsa, of course, but this fall, they have also been exploring movement and poetry. Up next is a piece featuring Emily doing interpretive movements to an original poem written and performed by Jaquela. Jaquela wrote this poem during a civic engagement session that focused on how art is a critical component of political and social movements. You will also see original artwork that youth created during the same civic engagement session. Please enjoy. This one's for the people. The people with melanin against their skin, the ones who walk this world with nothing but fear, the ones who've lost family to the privilege that'll never be our own, the ones who have lost their battle to oppression. 
How are, we, how are we expected to succeed in a system that is built against us? How are we supposed to feel protected if the protectors are the ones gunning us down? How are we a threat while doing nothing to threaten you? Oh, that's right. The color of my skin is the threat in these circumstances. For the people who aren't repping for the culture, the culture you always want to have, the slang you use to feel cool, the N-word loosely running off your tongue, the hair you wish to have. All of y'all are silent, not saying a word, but we see you. All those times you wish you were like us, and now, now you're silent when we need the support the most. Black Lives Matter, and if that triggers you in any way, you are a part of the problem. Thank you to Kayla and Emily for sharing that powerful piece with us. And thank you so much for joining us this morning and for your generosity. Your support makes change happen in Boston's Latin Quarter and in every corner of our city. I also want to thank our staff, in particular, the development team and Brian Farrell for making this morning a great success. Congratulations again to Wilmer Hale, Ismaldi, and Congresswoman Presley on their awards and for continuing to create opportunities and inspire the next generation of leaders in our community. And last, but certainly not least, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule this morning and for your unrelenting support throughout the year. Thank you and hope you have a great rest of the day. Yes, I know I can ignore the time.
Hard to think.